it was more than I think either of us could understand it for, for a long time, not just at first, for months. I'm pretty sure you'd call me numb at the time. I remember I was working a couple jobs and it was after one, you know, one of my long days when I got a phone call that said, you know, Ryan, come home. Didn't give a reason, didn't give, and Roseanne was on the other line just in tears. They said, just come home. I said, okay, what's wrong? Tell you when you get home, bye. I think hearing the news from a doctor that your child is critically ill has to be the worst news you can ever hear. Probably even worse than hearing that a parent is ill because we expect people to have illness as they get older, but little kids, it, it's pretty devastating to hear that they're really sick and that their life may even be threatened. The parents show amazing strength and they learn to adjust and they learn to have hope for the future and trust in the doctors and just to come together as a family and to support each other when times are so difficult. I've been I've known Rosemary since about January 2010, so that's a little bit more than a year and a half. And uh, in that time, you know, she's had a wonderful impact on all of us. She's a great kid that really enjoys being a, you know, young girl, um, and has touched all of us. And she's had a great quality of life too. So she's really thrived, I think, in the last year and a half here. It's been completely different. Everything changes mm -hmm. from the moment she was diagnosed. I mean, it was like a big whirlwind of things that we did. I mean, you went straight from being a normal family to every day in the hospital, you know, doing scans and all this prep work, and there's no, like, waiting time. It was one thing after another. Then the next week we did surgery, and then we had a couple days off, and she started chemo. And, I mean, we were, like, in it in two seconds. I think we try to do more than we ever would have because we don't know how long we get with her or what her future might be. Um, her prognosis isn't very good, but we want to have every you know as so many as many memories as we can. We want her to have as many memories as she can. So we don't we don't worry much as much about what our financial situation is if we if she's healthy enough to do something that's more than. How are we going to pay our bills next month? It's, you know, and everything's worked out for the most part. It's more what, how can we make every day worth, worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the mm -hmm. third time she's lost her hair. And this was her decision. And mm -hmm. I think as she's growing, the first time she was about 18 months. So she didn't understand or have, you know, the, the, the ability to grasp the concept of it so it didn't mean anything and then the second time it was a little bit more um, Ryan shaved his head and we were leaving to come down here that day when we found her hair falling out again and Rosemarie made the decision to get her hair cut that day and she looked at me again and said daddy you go first just like okay just a, literally probably a couple days ago she even looked at me and said daddy I, I think you should be bald as long as me so I'm in. I've had people, I had someone, a random stranger, when I was at the store, we were both out shopping, it was, it came up to me and said, I'd do the same thing for my kid. So obviously she got it, you know? She got that it was, it wasn't because this is what I wanted or not, but I'd do anything for her. We had been coming to the house once a week and it, for every time we'd come up, it'd be a, a three-day stay. We'd come up, you know, have our treatment the next day, and then go home. Rosemary's family lives four to six hours away from here, so they couldn't have gotten those treatments, which really kept her disease stable for about a whole year um, without Ronald McDonald House, because they really use that as a base. Ronald McDonald House is incredible because you quickly learn that you're not alone. I mean, not only do you have staff and volunteers here to care for you, but probably the best thing for families is that there's 77 other families here every single night who are going through the same thing. So it's an incredible community for a parent to be surrounded with. And it's, um, you know, we have families who make lifelong friends here and they keep in touch long after they leave Ronald McDonald House because they become like a second family to them while they're here. Ronald McDonald House Charities has really quickly became one of our 
something important, you know, and... They've helped my family out more than I think I can even put into words, you know. Just the excitement that I see on her face every time we talk about coming here, you know, just makes me realize how phenomenal this place is here, and I really don't know what we'd do without it. It really is a home away from home for us. It, it's not like we're going somewhere. It's, it's really like we're coming home. We're coming to someplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.